The Ministry of Information and Culture has warned Nigerians traveling to Europe and United States of America to be cautious of their belongings. Hi, welcome to what's happening. These are the top 10 stories. At number one, the Ministry of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has warned Nigerians traveling to Europe and the United States of America to be cautious of their belongings. The minister handed out the advice on Monday during the PMB administration's scorecard 2015 to 2023 series. He said it has come to the attention of the government that Nigerian travelers to the US and countries in Europe were increasingly dispossessed of their money, passports and other valuables at highbrow shops, particularly in the high streets of Oxford. He however added that this information is merely a piece of advice to citizens who may be planning a visit to the US or Europe and not a travel restriction. At number two, the Court of Appeal in Abuja has affirmed Bashir Mashina as the authentic candidate of the All Progressives Congress for Yobe North Senatorial District. The court on Monday upheld the judgment of the Federal High Court sitting in Damaturo Yobe State, which held that Senate President Ahmad Lawan was not the APC candidate for Yobe North Senatorial District in the 2023 elections. Recall that the Federal High Court of Maturo had on September 28, 2022, declared Machina as the winner of the primary election organized by the APC in May 2022. At number three, the Ocean State Governor Senator Ademola Adeleke has ordered the immediate suspension of the Chairman of the Ocean State Independent Electoral Commission, Mr. Shegun Oladitong. A statement signed by the Secretary to the State Government, Teslim Iwalaye, on Monday also suspended six members of the Commission with immediate effect. The suspension was said to have been based on several petitions bothering on financial impropriety, the reliction of duty, absenteeism and abuse of office against the State Chairman and members of the Commission. The statement further read that pending the outcome of investigation into the allegations, the Secretary to the Commission shall hold forth in running the affairs of the Commission. At number four, an early morning fire on Monday raised many perfumes, ladies' wares, cosmetics and wig shops on Kano Street near Onicha Main Market in Anambra. Items and properties worth millions of Naira were destroyed in the fire, which reportedly started at about 2 a.m. However, Martin Abuli, the fire service director, said the fire had been contained. The director said investigations had commenced to determine the cause of the fire. At number five, the Delta state government has disclosed that the state government's total debt profile currently stands at 272 billion naira. The State Commissioner for Finance, Fidelis Tilije, disclosed this on Monday in Asaba has said that 84 billion naira of the debt is for contractors and 27 billion naira is for pension arrears and a larger part of the debt was inherited by the administration of Governor Ifani Okowa. The Finance Commissioner also stated that the state was expecting a total refund of 240 billion naira from the Federation account as arrears of 13% oil derivation. At number 6, Members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities at the University of Ibadan have organized a protest to demand the implementation of their demands by the federal government. The protest followed the decision of the federal government to pay members of the union half of their salaries for October. Addressing journalists and students, Ayola Akinwale, UIASU chairman, said members of the union would resist poor treatment from the government. He also described the President Muhammad Buhari-led administration as the most lawless government in Nigeria's history. At number 7, the Nigerian Meteorological Agency has predicted dust haze and sunshine from Monday to Wednesday across the country. Nimet's weather outlook on Monday in Abuja predicts a slight to moderate dust haze across the north and north central regions with prospects of localized thunderstorms during the day in the inland and coastal cities of the south. The forecast warned people with asthma and other respiratory issues to be cautious. At number 8, the National Board for Technical Education says it plans to partner Morocco in promoting skills in Nigeria. NBTE Executive Secretary Idris Bukaji, disclosing this on Monday, said he led a Nigerian delegation to the Office of Vocational Training and Employment Promotion, Casablanca, to understudy the Moroccan Vocational Training Centers. He stated that a memorandum of understanding would soon be signed to facilitate the training of lecturers and assessors in Morocco as a collaborative effort to promote and equip Nigerian youths with skills. 
At number nine, BME has partnered the National Information and Technology Development Agency on utilizing technology to tackle insurgency and other security challenges in Nigeria. Speaking during the opening ceremony of the seminar on Monday in Abuja, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, said the seminar aimed at broadening the knowledge of participants. The Director of Research and Development of NIDA, Collins Agu, said modern technology has been introduced to tackle insecurity and he believes this will go a long way to avert this challenge. Finally at number 10, Abdul Qadir Umar, the desk officer in charge of rabies in the Bauchi State Ministry of Agriculture, has expressed concern over recent cases of rabies detected in carts in the state. Mr. Omar expressed his concern in an interview on Monday in Bauchi, stating that the concern was imperative, considering that rabies was known to be attributed to dogs. He called for the vaccination of dogs and cats over three or four months. He further warned that humans might be exposed to the virus, even if not beaten by the cat, but while processing the meat before it is cooked. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening. <music>